What's going on guys? Welcome back to the after credit scene. We're talking forecasts and predictions for episode two of She-Hulk. Uh, before we get started, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell so when we drop new content, you'll be the first one to know about it. And then share this sucker all across the multiverse. The first episode got us right into the action. Uh, there was a whole lot of origin story and it answered a whole lot of questions regarding where She-Hulk came from. Uh, some things about Bruce Banner that we didn't know and some fan service questions that we've been asking for quite a while. Um, but given that and given the things that we've seen in the trailers thus far, I think we have a little bit of a filler episode coming here. Normally, I don't like filler episodes. They frustrate me because why did you add them in there? Get to the story. It's, it screams bad writing to me. However, in order to get uh, Jen Walters from becoming She-Hulk to working uh, in a department where she is specifically working with heroes or, or people that are, are powered, things like that, th there's some, some stuff that needs to happen. And, and I know they went pretty quick with it last episode. They could move pretty quick through it this episode, but I think you're more likely to get a lot of that set up, maybe a cameo sprinkled in. We'll talk about that here in a second. But given that you only have about 30 minutes, I think you're going to get a little bit of a filler episode that's going to kind of explain how she becomes uh, an attorney specifically working with powered people. And that's going to set up the last five or six episodes. So um, I, I'm 100% confident here that we're going to get a filler episode, but I think it's going to be really fun. I'm excited to see what they do with it, especially with the fourth wall breaks. I think there's going to be more of that. They're kind of easing you into it but I'm really excited to see how they kind of deal with this. Um, I think given Miss Marvel, given Spider-Man No Way Home, and the fact that a lot of the people that Jen is gonna be uh, defending uh, or dealing with are gonna be in some kind of supermax damage control facility, I think we're actually gonna get to see some more damage control. Some of those characters pop back up again. Um, I think Titania from the first episode, who we just got a glimpse of, uh, Jamila Jamil's character, uh, popping in there at the end. Uh, I think her character is going to play a bigger role through the whole series than just uh, a, a cameo, especially given how much, the, how much Marvel has talked about her and how much uh, social media time she's gotten. So uh, there's a lot there that's going to happen. Now, th they might not hit that in this next episode, so that's why I've got it at 80%, but I think it's coming. I just think to wait on it would, would be a little awkward. So I think we're gonna get a lot of that here. That's why my prediction uh, percentage here is so high. I wanna stop for a second before we get into this. I know uh, lots of families like to watch Marvel shows. Um, a lot of my viewers and subscribers and people I know uh, watch Marvel stuff. And we already had this conversation with some of our friends. This show is gonna be a little less family, a little more frisky. Um, so parents, you know, be a little more careful uh, screen these episodes before you watch them, particularly uh, with some of the revelations after last episode regarding Captain America and the conversations that were had around that. Um, th there were some things there that I think uh, you might want to watch before you just go in blind and let your kids watch them too. Um, also, there uh, are some things with She-Hulk's character uh, where, where she is a little more um, adult uh, in, her, in her conversation, in her content. Uh, with the fourth wall breaks, I think they might be trying to kind of ease their way into some dare, uh, some uh, not daredevil territory, uh, even though that's coming, uh, but some uh, Deadpool territory uh, and, and kind of testing the waters there, so to speak, to see how that's going to go. Uh, in that regard, just be careful um, because uh, with some of this new content and new direction, uh, there could be some stuff there that you'd kind of regret just letting your kids watch right off the bat before you kind of have a chance to screen it. Um, moving on, cameos galore. Uh, there's already been uh, a short scene and some stuff in the trailers uh, where you've gotten the idea that there's going to be uh, cameos and, and Jen even makes a fourth wall break and kind of jokes about it. Um, I put duh here because we've seen it, uh, but I put it in here as a prediction because you need to pay attention to it. Some of these characters, even though they're little characters and even though they might be, you know, well, why don't they throw in that obscure character? One, it's gonna be a good opportunity for Marvel to throw in some obscure characters, to make fun of them, to joke and poke at themselves. 
but also to maybe set up some characters that they could have fun with later on in the future. Um, a lot of the conversations that directors and writers have uh, whenever they're talking to the media sometimes really centers around the fact that Marvel lets them pitch ideas and say, well, I want to use this character, I want to use that character. And then Marvel just gets to say, or Kevin Feige in particular gets to say, yeah, you can use this one, but do this. Or, yeah, sure, go ahead and use that character. Um, and so they, they've got a stable of characters that they can use here and do things with. And some of these cameos might be a little more weighty than you think they would be, rather than just some kind of glorified Easter egg. Having said that, Watch for all the Easter eggs. This series, I think, is more prime than others to just throw in a whole bunch of Easter eggs and a whole bunch of really cool, interesting things just for fan service sake. Um, not just with the fourth wall breaks, uh, which I think are kind of Easter eggs in and of themselves, depending on what she says. But uh, th there's some threads there that I think they're gonna they're gonna run with, just like in Moon Knight and in the Miss Marvel show. Uh, Marvel has really enjoyed putting these QR codes uh, in their episodes. There was one in the back, back of the bar in the hallway whenever Jen uh, stumbles into the, the bar uh, after the car wreck, and it took you to a Marvel webpage that had uh, a She-Hulk comic attached to it. There's going to be a lot more of that. Uh, I think it's a really cool way to highlight their website, to highlight digital comics, uh, and for people to kind of find something and interact with the episode. I think, it's, I think it's really interesting. It's a lot of fun. So keep looking out for those. But watch for threads when it comes to these Easter eggs. Why did they pick that Easter egg? Why did they pick that cameo? What are they doing with that? And, and does it have some threads later on? I think there's a lot of things that are going to pop up in this series that are going to really lend themselves not just to things we've seen before, but things that are coming up. Marvel loves to throw things in that you just gloss over and then come back months later, years later, and go, it was right in front of our face the entire time. So keep looking for those things. I think this is a good place to find those things. Having said that, in addition to that, let's watch for a common thread. This series has really been set up to be a little bit more of a one-off uh, per episode. I'm not saying I mean, it's a procedural, um, but a, a law drama, a courtroom drama, uh, the comedy involved with all that and, and just having these episodes kind of stand alone a little bit and introduce a new cameo of the week and that kind of thing. They've kind of teased some of that, but I do think there's going to be a common thread with not just Jen Walter's story, but where she's going, where she ends up, and the, the villains or the main an, uh, antagonists coming out of this story. So I'd watch for a common thread and maybe a common threat as well. Um, I think uh, this Titania character, with some of her connections, I think her being introduced at the beginning of episode one, she's going to be pulling some strings from behind the scenes. Um, and you might find out towards the end of the series that she was behind some things uh, or that somebody connected to her behind her was behind everything. So 75% um, here, I, I think, I just don't think Marvel does anything by accident. And I don't think... Um, I think they rarely throw something out there that's just, hey, here's some fun something for you. Um, the I Am Groot uh, animated series is something that I think would fall under that character. They put something out there that was just a whole lot of fun and really cute, um, and they could sell some merch off of it. Um, you've also been told that that little animated series in no way affects the canon of the MCU. It's just little small stories, um, and they kind of let it go. I don't think that Marvel is going to put all their time and energy into a new character that could pop up elsewhere, put other cameos in there and use this character as a way to bridge some stories um, from the earlier phases and moving forward without there being some kind of common thread, common threat, something that moves the entirety of the MCU forward. So um, watch out for those things. Um, I, I think all of these things are connected. Uh, and so, I mean, it is a shared universe. And so... There's things that are going to happen here that are going to have effects on other things and vice versa. So um, having said all of this, I kind of want to address not just what I've said, but some of the controversy that I've seen online this week. Um, feel free to share this. Take a sound bite of it. Share it with somebody else. Um, I live in a very, very red state. I have grown up in a very conservative environment um, all of my life. Uh, I'm one to kind of stay out of politics i don't like talking about it i think it's a little bit pointless in a lot of circles and in a lot of regards however 
I've seen a lot of people who who want to scream wokeness and want to scream that that Marvel is just pandering to one side of our political climate uh, all week long and they cite the one little scene where Bruce and Jen are talking and Jen says I can control my anger uh, better because I'm a woman and I've had to do it for longer than you have. Um, as some way to say that Jen Walters, that, that somehow this show is woke and somehow this show is not entertaining and is pushing an agenda and on and on and on and on and on. One, chill. It's, I understand that people want to push narratives. I understand that in media, people on both sides are going to push ideals and stories and everybody comes to a story and tells stories and says things from their own worldview and perspective. However, it's okay to change things up here. Watch the whole show, watch the whole episode, look at things in context. I think that one scene was really excellent uh, because Bruce has had this whole character journey where he's had to learn how to come to grips with who he is and what he is and he is putting his own presuppositions on his cousin, not because he's a man and not because he thinks, not because he doesn't understand women, although there's a case to be made for that, which is totally fine. But he had this whole journey and he's assuming that no, I mean, and she's even said it, I don't want to be a Hulk. I don't want to be a superhero. And he's trying to tell her, you kind of don't have an option here. Yes, you got to find your own path, but he doesn't want to see her go down the same path he went down, and he's trying to help her not just control becoming the Hulk, but come down off of it. And that's what she speaks to, that she has lived in an environment where she has lived at an angry level for, for quite a while. She's seen the things in her world that are very real things that cause her to be angry, and she has learned to control that anger uh, in a way that maybe Bruce as a man had to take a different path to get to. She's going to have her own struggles, her own journey, and you're going to see that through the entire series. You're going to see it moving forward. That's what character development is. But don't jump in and make some supposition about where a show is going and what's being said and why it's being said without just enjoying the show for purely the entertainment value. It drives me nuts that people want to take something that Marvel has carefully and craftily put together over a 10 to 12 year span that they have a plan for moving forward for the next 10 to 15 years and say they don't know what they're doing, this is all a mess, you know, phase four is awful, you know, the MCU peaked at Endgame. All of those people are going to come back around and they're going to be super quiet until the new Avengers movies pop up and they'll go, this was the most amazing thing I've ever seen and they were telling us this all the way back then and the rest of us are gonna be here going, we told you from the beginning, chill out and enjoy the ride. So, having said that, chill out and enjoy the ride, guys. This show was a lot of fun. I love it when they introduce new characters. I love it when they take us in a little bit of a new direction, but I also love the fact that Marvel kind of feels like home that you go into a show and they have the little quippy things and they have the cameos and they have the, the fun little things involved in it that just makes it exciting and good entertainment. And it's fun stories. And also, not every story is for you. It might be for somebody else. It might be for this other person. I'm sure little Muslim girls were getting upset for 15 years going, Marvel didn't add any character that looks like me, that acts like me. And then Miss Marvel shows up and everybody else gets so upset because it's too young, it's too Disney oriented, it's too much of uh, Muslim culture, it's too much this, it's too much that. Chill out. Just enjoy the shows. I normally don't rant. That's my rant. That's my soapbox. I'm off of it. You want to stitch me into a TikTok, you want to add that someplace, go for it. I'll welcome it. We'll have the conversation. But I enjoyed the show. And I've been really frustrated at watching people go nuts all week long uh, about some of these ridiculous things that just watch the show and take the whole thing in its entirety and then be the judge of it. Just wait. That's all I'm saying. Just wait. Judge the whole thing. Um, other than that, I, I wonder what you guys think about some of these things. I'm really excited about all the cameos. I'm actually really excited about some of the damage control stuff. Um, but 
What do you think about all these different things? Tell us in the comments. As always, like and subscribe to the channel. Share this thing everywhere so we can bring more people to the conversation with us. And check out some of our other content over here. We got tons of things you can sink your teeth into. And when the next one drops, guys, we'll catch you right back here. Later.